On Long Island, one of the judges in the divorce and custody battle that eventually led to the death of eight-year-old Thomas Valva is recusing himself from the case. And now tonight, child protective services workers are weighing in on this. CBS 2's Jennifer McLogan has more from Suffolk County. Child Protective Services caseworkers assigned to Thomas Valva's case are reported to be anguished and heartbroken at the eight-year-old boy's death, allegedly at the hands of an abusive father. Public sentiment pointed towards them in a negative way, as if they had willfully, deliberately shirked their responsibilities as a public worker and a protector of children. The union president said that is absolutely false, that workers did what they're supposed to in Thomas's case, but under current law, their hands are tied. And Daniel Levler pointed to troubling statistics. Fewer than 200 caseworkers to monitor 1,000 children a year in the county, amid 9,000 reports of child abuse or neglect. Why couldn't a caseworker remove Thomas Valva and his brothers from the home. You can't remove a child from a parent without having clear-cut evidence as supported by the law that will be upheld by the judicial system. The child's mother fought for custody and documented the abuse, she says. I really tried so hard to protect my children, but I just could not, you know, penetrate the wall of corruption that was surrounding my case. Some CPS caseworkers complain their days are made up of paperwork instead of investigating homes where children are placed and that current privacy laws protect abusive parents. We have to design a system that prevents a tragedy like this from ever happening again. NYPD officer Michael Valva and his fiancee Angela Polina were able to convince courts that they were ideal parents gaining full custody. Thomas was punished, deprived of food and exposure to frigid temperatures, say police. He died of hypothermia on the bare concrete of his unheated Center Marich's garage. From Suffolk County, Long Island, Jennifer McLogan, CBS 2 News.